Now, we've been keeping an eye on the monitors in front of us, where the United Nations General Assembly, the annual meeting of world leaders, is taking place in New York. It's the main annual meeting which decides what the organization should do, and it's been described as a diplomatic speed dating event. Each world leader who turns up gets 15 minutes at the podium to address the gathering, but this is sometimes ignored. The former Cuban leader, Fidel Castro spoke for more than four hours in 1960, holding the record for the longest UN General Assembly speech. US President Joe Biden spoke earlier in the day, and so did President Zelensky of Ukraine. Nigeria's President Bola Tinubu is also there, along with leaders from nearly 200 countries. There are, of course, many issues on the agenda, including the Ukraine war, climate change, today the renewed conflict between Armenia and Azerbaijan and coups in West Africa. Well, to try to get a better understanding of what goes on at that General Assembly meeting, let's cross to New York now and speak to Arrive's correspondent Adeshua Omoruan, who is there to cover that mammoth event and uh, looking the part, I have to say. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Um, so the full General Assembly back in action, uh, Adeshua, I wonder if you've seen all those world leaders coming into the UN area with all their sort of long motorcades. I'm wondering what the traffic's like there. Thank you very much, House. You know, it, with the UNJ back in action, the sight of traffic is quite a spectacle. Uh, there's been extensive uh, road closures and, of course, great luck. Even the city's uh, Department of Transportation has issued those a lot to New Yorkers. This is an annual event, Charles, except for when we had the pandemic really in its thick then there was reprieve for new yorkers i don't know if they can ever get used to this traffic you know every year same time but i guess it's a little price to pay for the greater good uh trying to aspire and move closer to a more peaceful even though that's far from uh peaceful what we have is far from peaceful with all the conflicts a more peaceful and better world to live in Charles it's it's quite a spectacle the traffic uh, the extensive closures the heightened security checks I and my my team have had to go through several security checks we even had sniffer dogs going through our equipment to access this area uh, just right by my right-hand side is where you have the main building, uh, the United Nations General Assembly Hall, where the world leaders uh, you have been watching for quite uh, some hours now speak. Yes, that building is where they are at the moment as they are giving their speeches uh, in 15 minutes, Charles. Well, I mean, as you said, it's murderously busy there, but you're also there at a very historic time, and, and we're very happy that you're there covering it for us. But what are we to make of the fact, Adeshua, that four of the major five countries who have a permanent veto are not sending their leaders, China, Russia, France and the UK? I mean, does that slightly lessen the impact of the general meeting when some of the major countries are not sending their leaders? I guess, Charles, if you call it a Biden show, you would not be far from the truth at this point with uh, only the U.S. having uh, President Biden uh, take the podium and, of course, the other four members of the U.N. Security Council with the veto powers not making it or, like we like to say here, not trekking to the United Nations General Assembly because at some point the motorcades have to stay behind and the world leaders trek into uh, the, the premises, Charles. But hey, uh, why it is correct that some critics say their absence may uh, lessen the symbolic significance of this uh, uh, summit. It is, we have to say that uh, there are diplomatic representatives from this country, except for China, who did not send uh, the foreign affairs minister and no reason was given. Uh, it is not out of the ordinary. Uh, Chinese leader Xi Jinping uh, normally 
you know, misses this summit. Same goes for Ra Russia, President Vladimir Putin. Oftentimes, he also skips the summit. It would have been breaking news. It would have been the, one of the biggest news of the day if he actually made it to the summit this time around, Charles, because there is a, uh, an arrest warrant hanging over his neck, remember? So I don't think a lot of people were expecting him here. Uh, the foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, is on ground. Like, again, I said, while critics would say their absence may lessen the significance, the symbolic significance, we must add that, you know, some of these discussions really are made through diplomatic channels and negotiations and not just some high level profile speeches given in 15 minutes, Charles. Yes, that, that's, that's, a, that's a good analysis. And of course, we saw you, uh, your, your doorstepping interview yesterday with the South African president, Cyril Ramaphosa. I mean, I imagine this is an opportunity to try and grab VIPs. I mean, are you able to get access or to shout questions to them or, they are, or are their entourages so big that you can't get anywhere close to them? I must say, Charles, uh, it's a mix of both, uh, really, that you've itemized. It's amusing to see sometimes the world leaders even lost within their own entourage and their security details. You can hardly even identify some of the world leaders. Remember, this is one of the biggest stage. In fact, it is the biggest uh, diplomatic stage for world leaders in, in the Charles, those countries who don't get invited to G20, those countries who don't get invited to G7, they all have the opportunity to come here uh, for 15 minutes and plead their cause on the biggest world stage. So sometimes it's difficult to even identify the leaders. And of course, like I said, they are crowded within their security details. But yes, it is an opportunity uh, for, for you to grab the VIPs. Luckily for me, like I did yesterday with President Cyril Ramaphosa, uh, that was out of here, actually. He had just had a meeting with Niger's President Bola Chinubu, and I had to doorstep him to get an interview. But yes, we've also tried at some time to shout questions. Uh, I did at some point to the South Sudan leader yesterday, but he didn't give a reply. Well, I have to say that you've got what we call the grit of a reporter and that's what it takes to get that interview and you did get one of the big ones so keep doing it and thank you very much indeed uh, adeshua omorowan is a rise correspondent he's she's there covering that mammoth event the general assembly meeting in new york and she was talking to me from there